The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. It is some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was the bleak December, and each dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow, from my books the surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late night visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This is it, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or or, madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came a-rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and the echo murmured back the word. Merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Is the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of saintly days of yore. Not the least obeyance made he, a minute stopped or stayed he, but with the mane of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though my crest be shown and shaven, though, I said, art thou sure no craven? Ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore, Tell me what lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly vow to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing a bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon a sculptured bust, above his chamber door, with such a name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word did he outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends had flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. I 
deliberate set. Nevermore. Startled at the stillness, broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, but it utters his only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master who unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of nevermore. But the raven, still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned chair in front of the bird and bust in door. And then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloated o'er. She shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tuft floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite in the pent from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget the lost Lenore. The raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether temptest toss thee a here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels named Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign in parting, bird or fiend, I shriek, upstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonium shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door, take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. In the lamplight o'er him, streaming, throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted.